You got to have something that always pushing you, always driving you. Not everything, like I said, going to be handed to you. I had to get it out the mud exactly where y'all at. So basically what I want to tell y'all, like, keep dreaming. No matter what neighborhood you from, no matter where you come from, no matter who your cousin, your brother is, keep dreaming. Because one day, if you keep working hard, if you keep pushing yourself, you're going to achieve your dreams. I mean, I did it. So my last thing I'm going to say, man, y'all keep pushing. No matter what's going on in your life, you know what I'm saying, stay prayed up, keep God first. Keep pursuing your dream, no matter how small you is, no matter how big you is. And I mean, if y'all think, I mean, y'all can't do it, I mean, look at me. I was in the same shoes y'all in. So I'm saying, y'all have a good day. My dad was like a best friend, taught me everything I know about integrity, being a man. Fifth and sixth grade, he went to Iraq and Baghdad. And seeing him so far overseas and still be able to affect me, he just, he just uh, taught me so much. So I'll never forget the day. Uh, I was going to the seventh grade and that morning, uh, he taken me to my track meet, but he was just like, kept telling me he loved me and whatever. He was like, you know, like, I'm always be here for you. Just call me, I'm gonna call away. If you wanna talk about it after the track meet. I'm like, all right, dad, I gave him a hug and I got in the car. I was playing in a basketball tournament at the University of Houston. I was headed home and I got the phone call from him. Something was telling me, go see him. Go see your uncle, go see your uncle. So I made a U-turn and drove all the way back to go see him. And we stood out there, we talked. He was riding four wheelers, hanging with the guys. They was trail riding. And I left and went home. And so the night come and I'm like, man, he's supposed to come pick me up, whatever. So I'm like waiting to him. It's me and my little brother and little sister. So I go to sleep at my auntie's house. My aunties woke us up. You can hear her screaming and her crying. Just, Daryl's got into an accident. They rushed to the hospital. They don't know what's going on. So immediately I jump up, everybody get in the car, people crying. And for some reason, I just start feeling cold. I got my little brother and sister with me, so I'm trying to like comfort them. They seeing me crying, they crying. Maybe around one or two o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call from one of my uncles. So I answered the phone and that's when he gave me the news that I need to get up to the hospital to see him. And when I got there, that's when I was here with the news. I seen my uncle and he just, he looked at me and he, he just started crying. He started, he saying he's sorry and everything. And I'm like, why are you saying you like sorry? So like, I'm automatically like starting to think of the worst. Like, man, like he's gone. They told me like to come here and they walked me by the room just saying my dad just like dead and whatnot. Like it really, it really put me in a bad place. It's some days I relive that night and it's like, it's, it's, it's very tough, you know, losing your best friend in a matter of seconds like that, knowing that you just talked to him earlier. It was, it was very tough. To know that I will never ever be able to look at him again, talk to him, I don't think it really dawned on me when it first happened. I think it might have dawned on me a couple of years after I realized that I had to raise them the rest of my life by myself. <laughs> so a lot of times, you know, I didn't understand why. I didn't want to understand why. Why did that have to happen to me and my kids, you know? And on this day here, <laughs> it hurt it so bad. because he's supposed to be here. <laughs> it happened in 2010, but it still feels like it was yesterday. Everybody, I don't really think nobody has really gotten over it yet, but we try to do the best that we can do to get past it.
To get ready for a new season, I always take my summer training very serious. Um, you know, making sure I'm still getting to the gym, getting my workouts in, and um, you know, get on the ice and working on my uh, my skills and my skating. That's a fairly long off season. I think beginning of the summer, you're just trying to rest up, heal any minor uh, bumps and bruises you have, and then once you kind of rest up, get your bearings back. You know, you start building back at the basics. I mean, this year we're finally majority upper class, which we haven't been in a, in a long time. So I think that with the Big Ten being so young, um, we can really can you know use that our experience to our advantage, and we'll be able to win those games. Yeah, I think we got um, great chemistry this year. The, the three freshmen have been awesome. They uh, they fit right in in the summer, and we got them acclimated pretty quick. And the older guys have uh, you know really helped them help them fit in. They look great out here, and I think three of them are going to really uh, help us and have an impact on our team. Everything we do is with a purpose. You know, everything's hockey specific, and you know we build into it so that we're all feeling really good when the season comes around. So. I mean, every single guy in that room has put in so much work and so much effort this year. You know, it will be worth it in the long run because we know we're going to be one of the most conditioned teams and the strongest, you know, most in shape. And that's when we're going to be able to take advantage of teams. Yeah, this time of the year, the competition is always high. Guys fighting for positions in the lineup. I think uh, this year especially, you know, it's definitely making everyone better on the team. No matter what spot you are in the lineup, I think everyone's valuing the competition and it's making everyone better no matter no matter where you are, and uh, I think it's going to help us as a whole. Our goals as a team this year, obviously, win a national championship, Big Ten championship, all that. But I think as a team, we're just focused on getting better every day, day in and day out, and you know, being the best possible team we can be. First, you know, that's going to be you know starting off with the Big Ten or non-conference extremely well. And then moving on to the Great Lakes Invitational, having a great uh, showing there. And it's been a long time if you look up at the banners here since they've won that. So I think, you know, especially for the senior class, that's really something that, you know, we wanted to be a part of and be able to do. But if you look at our schedule, every single team that we play, minus a couple, is ranked. So, you know, if we start winning a lot of hockey games here, which we will, you know, we're going to find ourselves as uh, national contenders. And, you know, that's a spot that we want to be in. So that's extremely exciting. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to uh, really surprising a lot of people and, uh, you know, kind of being the underdogs here. Yeah, um, you know, Coach's message to us this season is, has been uh, to make sure that we play, play the way that we know how to play. And uh, when, we, when we stick to the things that make us great, uh, you know, we're a really successful team. And that's, that's playing the right way, 200 feet, and uh, putting together a full 60 minutes. You know, we know that uh, there's a lot of people doubting us this year, and we're kind of blocking out the noise and just control what we can control, and that's the way we play. The apartment we're in right now, where I grew up at, spent like some of my life. Like I actually live in like six and different apartments in this area. We're in the Greens Point District right now. Uh, Right here in my apartment, right behind me. One bedroom apartment. It was like four of us, five of us stayed in there with my mom. When I lost my dad, it was a real tough point in my life because, I mean, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I really wanted to quit playing football. I was like, man, you know, maybe this ain't for me. Like, maybe I gotta, you know, get a job to help my mom with some bills. I was angry, real angry at the world. I knew in eighth grade that he was going through a difficult time uh, and he was trying to figure out himself, you know, and trying to connect with different people. Uh, but I can, I can see him kind of turning for uh, down the wrong path. Uh, I, I can remember I was uh, coaching basketball and uh, he was an extremely good basketball player, but he just was, wouldn't listen. And then uh, I kicked him off the team. I went automatically into survival mode. It wasn't even football, because when you go into survival mode, you're doing anything that, you know what I'm saying, to help you survive in, you know, in the habitat that you're in, the culture you're in, the community you're in. These connected with these apartments, and these apartments to next of us called Albert Court. One of my real good best friends got killed at right before I went to college. 
And I know one thing he always told me is like, because he was real good at football. His name was Terrell Payne. He always told me like, no matter how small you is, no matter, you know, if you're not, you know, good at something, you should always work at it. I mean, and we came from, you know what I'm saying, a real tough area in a little air, in a tough neighborhood, but it's one thing, like, I can always count on him, you know what I'm saying, to show me a way, even though if he had to, you know, take the opposite way. And that's one thing he always showed me is like, he ain't want me to do the street thing. He ain't want me to, you know, carry the gun or sell drugs. He ain't want me to do that. He wanted me to play football. Once last year ended, once the playoffs ended for us, we took a week and kind of reformulated and kind of got ready. And, and really, that's this season started about a week after last year's ended, and that was for the coaches and the players. And the guys had uh, they had a great spring. We got to work uh, a lot on the ice with uh, skills and uh, you know some concepts that we wanted to get across. And they had a great uh, spring and summer in the weight room. Coach Forka pitch did a great job. Hockey's a fast game and everything's everything's based around speed and power and, and that's kind of the way we set up our, our off season. We implemented some new things, just kind of kept building. So when we got back, uh, the guys were really ready to go. And I think, you know, with this group, uh, guys have a pretty good idea of how we operate and how we have to do things. And, uh, you know, culturally, um, the, the level of work and, and the level of details has really improved. And we're, we're excited about that. And I think that, you know, where we're at, uh, compared to the first year and compared to the second year, uh, I thought we really improved, and, and I think we will again in the third year. Did you bring your bathing suit today? Did you bring your bathing suit today? Just keeping your toes in. Chemistry of lines, that's, that's a fun thing to try and put together, and, and you have to try a few different things. And, you know, we have some pairs that we like together. Um, you know, Kodorenko and Lewandowski will be together, and, you know, we're kind of looking for a guy to play on the right side of that line or the left side because Lewandowski can play on either side. It's on the back side. It's, it's been uh, pretty clear the Kriegers have been kind of working together, and Dennis, uh, Susanna, and Jared Rosberg, are, you know, they were together all last year, had real good chemistry. So, you know, you, you work through that stuff, and you, you try different things, and you try and keep it exciting, and um, you try and keep it new for the guys every day in good tempo. Uh, we get four hours on the ice every week, and um, I think so far they, they've done a great job. I think uh, the, the coaches have, have done a good job mixing things around, and now the guys are starting to get excited. They can, they can see the game coming up here pretty soon. They know we're heading out on the road in just over a week, and uh, um, now it starts to feel real, and, and there's a little more excitement around the room before practices. You know, what I've talked about since, since I first got back here in terms of, uh, you know, starts with recruiting and, and identifying the kind of, of players and, and athletes and students and, and character type people that we want to have here. Doing those two things has been, been good and the buzz and the excitement around the arenas and around Michigan State hockey has been, been outstanding. And then the third thing was, was to get, you know, Munn back to being, you know, a really exciting place to play and we've had, we've had really good increases uh, attendance wise and, you know, we were in the top 10 in the country last year I think we'll increase that again this year then the expansion and get that going and we've got a hole in the ground and, and that should be ready for next year I think the players feel it uh, I know the coaches feel it and I think people in the hockey community uh, uh, can see what's happening here and it's, it's a good thing to be around right now I saw my mom crying one night and she was just she was just uh, just tired of like losing her car I couldn't pay on it, losing another apartment, had to move again. And this was like, not even staying somewhere almost a year, you like gotta move again. So it was like seeing her crying and it's like, I'm like, man, it's something like, it's something I can do. And like looking at football, seeing all the guys come back and I'm like, man, I gotta do this. Seeing my little brother and little sister and I'm like, I'm like, I gotta be the one that changed something. Open up opportunities for different people in your family. Seeing my mom cry that night and she just let, I really, she said, I just really need you to focus in and like, I need your help. Like, I need you to, if you're going, if we're going, if you're going to play football, let's do it. The Daryl that was, you know, I say pushed back a little bit and was, that wasn't the Daryl Stewart that I met. That was the Daryl Stewart that was going through things at a young age and trying to figure out his way. And, you know, to use sports as that, that path to get him back grounded, uh, that's what I think, you know, helped get him back on the right direction. My coach, Coach Land, literally sat me down in the office and talked to me for a good three hours just about just like, why man shouldn't just give up because things get hard. You don't run from adversity, you attack adversity. 
You know, I was like, you know, I want to be different. I want to be, you know, the person that, like, I was kind of tired of living in the shadow of, like, my dads and my older brothers and cousins. I'm like, I want to write my own history and show people that I can come up here and do it. I was so glad when he graduated because I knew he was leaving from here. You know, I look at a lot of his peers and that he, people that he played football with. You know, he lost a close friend and all of that. And, they, and I see and think that could have been him. And I was so glad, even though Michigan was so far, but he wouldn't have been here. I was kind of nervous for him at first, like moving from another state, because we never, we never been out of Texas before. We're like, man, Michigan. And once he said he was good, we was good. And once he said, yeah, it's cool, you know what I'm saying? I'm cool with the vibe. I was happy for him, too, because I really, we really, I really didn't want him to be down here, really. This school is like such an amazing gift to people, because it's like it teaches you, teaches you so much. And there's a variety of people around, and you learn so many things. It's been an amazing experience being here just creating that Spartan strong and that Spartan family. Tonight, the disaster in Texas in the wake of Hurricane Harvey is deepening. Houston is a city in crisis and now a city of islands. The floodwaters isolating sections like you see behind me. I call home because I'm like, man, what's going on? Ain't nobody calling. It's, it's midday. And I'm looking on the news and they was just like, Hurricane Harvey has hit this area, hit this area, and like we stayed in our apartments. So it's like, it was like water all the way to the third floor of the apartments. And the apartment building was like super tall. You seeing people in like laying on beds, refrigerators, sitting inside of refrigerators, floating. You seeing the streets where you played at as a kid, like just, just full of water, everything just cars overflowing. And, I'm getting a call, I call my mom, they nobody answering. I finally get a hold of my sister. I was like, what, what's going on, everybody? And like, they showed me the, house, the apartment. My grandmother, like, she was disabled, like, she can't walk or nothing like that, so they literally have to, like, her bed was floating, so they had to, like, get her out of the, the first floor, which was, like, completely, like, up to here. So people, like, getting, getting everybody evacuated now, then they trying to move it to the third floor, but I mean, the, it's, I mean, the, the whole apartment complex is deep with water, so the door's hard to open. Everybody panicking, like, turn on the news, seeing my friends rescuing people, saving people, seeing people drown, seeing all these things. And I really tested my faith, because I'm like, why? Like, why now? Like, we finally get somewhere where we finally can be happy. We finally a family. People finally, like, can come home and be kind of happy. It wasn't much, but it was something, you know? And like seeing my grandma almost losing her life to it, it's like, man, what's going on? You know, you never think like I didn't lost everything. You thinking about how are you gonna get out? But after all of that, we had lost everything, everything. And then it was to go stay in the shelter or try to find family members to go stay with. And there again, we're apart. So about a week and I'm asking like, man, I can't go by myself. So once I told everybody what I was trying to do, you had teammates like, I'll definitely go with you. I knew like, man, this is more than football. Like it's like a brotherhood. You know, like dad helped me go to Hurricane Harvey and like help my city out. Yeah, it was amazing. And that was like a very emotional time, but it was a, a great experience seeing like to join these people's eyes as we help and do the Things and like it was our bye week, so it was like a time for where we were supposed to like relax and chill, get ready for the next week's game. But Coach D like granted that. <laughs> After the hurricane, and she finally found somewhere to live at, and it's like an actual house. Seeing that really put us in the place where it's like family being re reunited together. Like I'd be on Facetime, seeing like everybody's back in the living room, eating, joking, playing cards. It motivated me, and, and it's just like, man, this is what it was all about. These pictures on the wall out there, they heard about Daryl Stewart, but to see him actually come back and give back and speak to the kids, I mean, it's, it's awesome. They can see themselves in him, because he grew up in the same area, uh, went to the same high school, and see him come back and, and just, you know, man, that's Daryl Stewart. He, come, he went to Nimitz. That gives them motivation.
gives them a sense of pride. And, you know, that's what we need. In a million years, we would have never imagined we would be here. I mean, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of him. He did it. You know, he did it. He have a bright future. He's willing to do it. He's able to do it. And he's comfortable at what he do. I know my husband is looking down and, and happy. I'm happy. You know, just come back to the community with positive things. I guess he probably looked at himself and said, look at me and what all I've been through, and I still made it. I always think about that, like what my dad would think. Definitely happy, definitely would be, and definitely tell me like, he's here with me. I know he'll tell me he loved me. Every time before the game starts, I always look up in the stands and I find that one spot that I know he'll definitely be in and just give me that head nod before the game and tell me, let's go. And just know he'll be proud of me and just be so happy the things that I accomplished.